What's up guys, it's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity Build-A video. Today we're going to be doing a video on feeder cities. Everything that you need to know about feeder cities and what level you should make your feeder city. Before we begin, I want to go ahead and let you guys know that we are on Facebook at SimCity Build-It, Missy NYT. We also have a few open spots in our group. If you are an active strategic player on the Missy's Building Guide and you're looking for a good group, you can go ahead and message Star. He is our new uh, recruiting person for the group. So that link will be in the description below. We also are on Discord. We've been on Discord for a while, but we've made a lot of changes to it. So there's a lot of different channels and options and information out there. So go ahead and uh, join us on Discord to get in contact with us. If Even if you don't want to join the group and you just want to conversate or post links, share you know, design stuff, whatever you want to do, you can do that on our Discord. Okay, so feeder cities. Well, what is a feeder city? Let's start there. A feeder city is a city that you use to feed your main city. Okay, so a lot of people think you need a feeder city. You do not. Okay, to be successful in this game, you absolutely do not need to have a feeder city. Can you have a feeder city? Yeah. Does it make things easier? Sometimes, sometimes not. It really depends on the condition of your city. Now, if your city is a high level city that has leveled up too quickly and doesn't have enough storage space, then you're probably going to want a feeder city because you don't find storage rares as often or dozer or really any rares, right? So it really just depends, but honestly, do you need a feeder city or do you need to just restart? You need to watch some of my restarting videos to determine which way would be the best way to go about things. More likely, uh, you would restart because honestly, trust me on this, I'm not going to get into all the details, but it is ridiculous how badly you screw up when you level up too quickly. Now, people get traumatized, they hear that, and then they don't want to level up to the right level that they need to be to be successful. They camp too low of level because of the stuff that they read on Reddit and Facebook forums, and I'm telling you that that is not true, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is figure out how you're going to use two cities. Do you have a different device? If so, great. That'll be the easiest way to go about it. If you do not have a different device, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to download a cloning app. So if you're on Android, I use one called Parallel Space. It's an application. I do have videos on my channel that explain how to use it. Then you're going to have to figure out how you're going to connect the cities together to transfer items, currencies, things like that. That being said, if you want to, you know, use the feeder city for rares, what is the best way to go about it? Well, a lot of people think that you need to be level like 10 or 8 or whatever because it's the lowest amount of items that you have unlocked. Therefore, people believe that that is the highest chance of seeing rares, and that's actually not entirely true. It's partially true. You do want to have a low amount of items unlocked, but here's the catch, okay? Just because you have let's say 10 items unlocked and out of those 10 items, let's say that two of them are storage, right? That does not mean that if you were to eliminate the other eight items that you have unlocked entirely, that you would just see a flood of storage on the global market. What would happen is you would open up the global market and you wouldn't see anything for sale. And at best you may see one or two boxes available. And that's what happens to low level players who camp too low of level. Now, this has been put to the test actually many times, and I have proof, a lot of proof, that what I'm saying is authentic. What you want to do is you want to level up to a certain point where you have enough depots unlocked. And by depots, I mean other people's shops. When you click on your Global Trade HQ, you want to actually have people to buy from, right? Now, that being said, you have to determine what level would be the best for you? Now, if your feeder city is going to be a city that you use to fund your big city with coins, you're going to also want to have 
items unlocked that actually make money, right? It doesn't make sense to remain so low of level that all you can really produce for money is like nails and some chairs and hammers or something. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You're not going to find a ton more rares at level 8 or 10 than you're going to find at level 18 to 24. It's not going to happen, okay? Then you also have to consider what other features you're missing out on by camping too low of level. You're not able to join a group, therefore you have to connect your cities via Facebook. So, what else are you missing out on? You're missing out on being able to transfer war items. You could simply just add your feeder city to a side group. Like, let's say that you're in an active group and they don't want to have your feeder city there. You can put your feeder city into a group that you've created, and then you can close the door on the group and then only allow yourself in there. And you can leave your main group, go transfer your items, and then go back to your main club if you need to. You can connect it via Facebook, so the only time you have to go to that group is if you need more items or something. This would allow you to get more items for cheap and would allow you to uh, transfer coins, rares, stuff like that. You do need to be aware though that if you sell 25 rares of the same exact rare at once, it will put a depot lock. Meaning basically what will happen is basically, so let's say that you're selling 25 BU remotes. If you put up all 25 remotes at the same time, Anything that you post after that has not been purchased yet will not be visible at all. So let's say you put up 28 VU remotes. Three of those will not be visible until you've purchased the ones that are there. It's not going to allow you to see any more. But once you've purchased those and you add more, then you can see them. But the ones that you posted after, those are gone forever. So never, I always tell people, never post that many rares, especially if you're not at your city, because I've seen it happen to people people just posting five, okay? When you reach out to EA for this, what they tell you in return is that there is no guarantee that just because you post something for sale that the global market is going to allow you to see it. That's kind of their way around it. Um, so usually what I do is I post five at a time, and I'm there at that depot picking them up immediately so that I don't have any issues. Now, what, how do I explain this? What level would be the best for you in terms of whatever it is that you want this feeder city for? If you plan to just farm the global market and do nothing else on this feeder city, then you're probably gonna wanna be probably at level 18. Okay, at least then you can join a group, you can put up the bare minimum in points for, uh, you know, like a legendary chest or whatever. You can obtain some cash that way. You can uh, get rares from mayor's passes and things like that. That would be ideal for you. Now, if you want to use this city for coins or you want to join a group with it, uh, ideally, honestly, the best the best level is going to be level 24. And the reason for that is because you can do a number of things. You can run tokens, gold tokens. You can make epic projects if you want to, uh, which running gold tokens is honestly going to be really beneficial for you in terms of currency. You can still find plenty of rares, okay? Trust me on that. Everybody on the Missy's Building Guide maxes out in three to six months three if they hunt the global market really good. Um, and that is th what they do is they speed level to 24. I actually had a guy in my group. Um, he found my building guide too late. and Well, not too late, but he found it later on. And he had already had his city for 10 months. He had camped level 10 for 10 months and maxed out his storage. <laughs> then he found my building guide and then he moved up. Now, the reason that this is not correct is because look how long it took him to accomplish one thing. All he accomplished was his storage. That's it. He didn't accomplish anything else. Whereas the people on the Missy's Building Guide, they were able to max their storage out in three months. And in the process of that, they were able to work their way up the leaderboard, win Mega, unlock all their land, unlocked 
all their beach, their mountain, which they only did in Mega, so they were able to boost their score up pretty nicely on their first couple weeks. They have all gold epics. They're able to run tokens, make money. It's, it's crazy how many people camp too low of level. They also were able to bank in on that legendary chest every week, which is 120 cash, 15 random rares, gold tickets. They were able to participate in two wars each week, which allowed them to stack up those war cards to be successful in the contest of mares. And they did phenomenally. They were also able to obtain buildings, participate in the contest of mares and side passes. They um, were able to participate in groups, you know, things like that. When you remain too low level, you you don't even have items that you can produce. They were able to produce on the production guide, donuts and nails and, uh, you know, whatever else it is that's beneficial at that level. There's like blue textiles. Actually, I think you unlocked that at like 25 or something. But the point being is that they were able to make coins, get epics done, get everything done that they needed done. So essentially, the best thing that you can do is figure out what your feeder city is going to be used for and then take whatever it's going to be used for and look at what would be the best level to accomplish that. Now, if we're talking terms of coins and rares, level 24 is going to be your best bet. You're, you're going to want to be able to utilize those gold tokens, make those epic projects. Um, you know, you're going to want to be able to do all that stuff. Trust me. Okay. Remaining a level eight or 10 is not going to get you more rares. You're going to open the global market and you're going to see <laughs> nothing. And when you see that one thing that you do manage to find, you're going to get there and it's probably going to be gone. Okay. So the no another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys, because I see this question a lot, and that is why would I go to level 18 when I unlock sugar and sugar floods the global market? Okay. Let me explain this to you. You remember when the Christmas shop was here just last month and everybody was like, oh my God, you know, where's the sugar? There's no sugar. During that month, did you see an overflow of rares? No, you did not. Why is that? Because that's not how the global market works. Even though it does have a little bit to do with it, yes. Unlocking items does have to do with being able to see other items. But just because you're not seeing one item does not mean you're gonna see a whole bunch of another item you can eliminate sugar at level 18 and you're still not gonna see a whole bunch of rares. That's not how this works, okay? The global market is a supply and demand kind of thing. So it's not that, let's say, more sugar is being sold than let's say donuts. It's that people are buying more donuts than they are in sugar. So what's happening is that's just what's left over from what's being purchased versus, you know, what's being sold and purchased. Now, when it comes to rare items, they're spread very thin and they're also purchased instantly, the moment that they get advertised. Whereas like sugar, for example, sugar is usually advertised and then usually the person has a whole bunch of them in their depot. So you may go to their depot and buy the stack that isn't advertised so it remains on the global market for long periods of time. Whereas a rare item does not. Now, given the speed in which a rare item is purchased, it more than likely ends up being that most of your rares are going to be obtained from clicking on items that aren't actually rares. And that's usually because people do not pay attention when they post for group members or they have something else advertised, right? So they post rare items up in their depot and the rare isn't the thing that's advertised. So it's actually been sitting there for a little bit longer than it would have been had they advertised the rare item. What you'll notice is a lot of times when you do get rares and you come across them in people's depots, it's usually from clicking on items that are not rares. So when you think about it like that and you say, okay, which type of player is going to be selling rare items? Well, 
the type of player that's going to be selling rare items is the type of player that either one doesn't need them, which is very far and few between, or low level players who don't know that they need to keep them, right? Now, how many people out there have made feeder cities? A lot. There's people literally hunting that everybody's out there hunting the global market like crazy all the time. It's no wonder that there's never anything on there. Now, can you imagine if everybody was to restart and follow the Missy's building guide, they would actually be able to help other people because they would be maxed out quickly, right? So for example, in our group, we have a lot of people that are maxed out on their storage. If you look here, all of these people here, okay? Chronic, she's been playing for six years. She still hasn't maxed out her storage. After six years of playing, yeah, she leveled too quickly. Here we have Sid, okay? His city is one year old, and he's level 60. And he spent, mm, let's see here. I want to say out of that year, nine months at least being level 24. Yeah. He maxed out his storage ages ago. TK, she's maxed out on storage. All she has is Dozer to unlock, and that's because she just unlocked a regional map. Okay, that's CD1 and 2. Lala, her city is only like seven months old. Everything's maxed out. She just unlocked a regional map, so she has a little bit of land to unlock. Star, his city is, what, two months old, and he's already at 400 storage. He's speed leveled to level 24. Maple, not sure. He came to me late in the game. Not sure how. I know his city's, I'm assuming, a couple years old, but he has a lot of feeder cities, like five. Uh, here we've got Retro. Again, he's a high-level player that came to me later on in the game. He did not follow the Missy's building guide. He's had his city for a long time, and he's at 640. Mana, same concept. He came to me later in the game. Uh, Mango, he followed the Missy's building guide. His city is less than a year old, I believe, or right around the one-year mark. He's been maxed out for a long time. Popo. Her city is three, four months old, maybe five months old. It might be five months old. Um, she is already at almost 600 storage. Prime, his city is, I want to say a month old, about a month. No, 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 because he's in Mega. Yeah, he's been in Mega for two weeks and takes, so his, his city is eight weeks old. Chris this is the guy that had his city for 10 months, and he camped a low level. Took him 10 months to max out his storage. When he did finally get up to level 24, he had no war cards obtained. He had no epic projects done. He had no tokens to rely on. Basically, all he had was max storage, and it took him 10 months to get there. Okay? The rest of these people are relatively new within the last... I want to say a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Except for Malvin, he's been here for, I want to say, four or five months, maybe. So, yeah. I mean, that isn't proof right there. Look at the progress reports. Now, when you think about it in terms of a feeder city, if a feeder city is going to feed your big city, it has to be successful, right? Otherwise, it's not going to be able to give you much. So... You need to be as successful as possible. And honestly, most of the time, what's going to happen is your feeder city, if you follow my advice, especially with the Missy's Building Guide, is that your feeder city is going to end up being better than your main city. And then you're going to end up just probably turning your feeder city into your, your main city. That's what a lot of people have ended up doing. So it's up to you what level you want to choose. If it was me... I would just go up to level 24, get everything done right, be successful, and that's how I would do it. Now, if you want to camp a really low level and, you know, deprive yourself of all those extra things that we've talked about in this video for what you believe to be a better chance of finding rares, trust me on this, that's not how it works. You're going to open up your global market and you're going to see like three things for sale. And of those three things, it's probably going to be wood and metal.
and when you go to those places, you're probably not going to find very much of anything. So, yeah. I mean, you also have to figure that another way that, I forgot to mention this, another way that you guys are going to get rares is going uh, and hitting the opinion bubbles, shopping at Daniel. Uh, the opinion bubbles and video ads are a big help. The opinion bubbles are going to be the best, though. And what those are is the bubbles that pop up around your city where the sims talk. Those sims will pretty much stop talking unless you are always moving stuff around and putting down new stuff. Like, let's say that uh, you have education coverage in an area and it's been there for a long time and the sims don't really talk anymore. What you want to do is you want to remove the school, place it down somewhere else, put a park there. And then after a couple minutes, put the school back, you know, and then move that, put some entertainment down, then move that, put the gambling down. Just move some stuff around and it will get the Sims talking. You start smacking the opinion bubbles, especially at a low level. Trust me, you're going to get all kinds of rares. I believe I did this on stream one time and I ended up with like 10 rares within 10 minutes or something. It was crazy. Just... Trust me on that, especially low-level players. Opinion bubbles always give out rares, okay? Best way to get those to pop up is to get the Sims to talk by moving specialization coverage around. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this video posted. Hopefully that answers your guys' questions. If you have questions on how to connect your feeder city, I do have videos up. I believe the video is labeled Two Cities, One Phone. That's what the thumbnail says, or how to connect your Facebook. If you're missing friends on your list, you can also look up that video. I show you guys how to get your friends back on your list. It's not just, you know, log out. You need to go to your Facebook and reactivate your, um, your game. Okay, good luck to you guys.